Okay, all right, so I can unmute. Okay, so all of you just watched Lindsay listening to the last bit of Monroe. <laughs> I yeah, have that was the last like six or seven <laughs> minutes that I had to listen to. I was. Oh my gosh, I have goosebumps all over the place. I was behind. I was behind. Oh, so obviously you were not missing anything. We had it on mute on purpose because I don't want to. You know, we're not giving away Presley Poles intellectual property. That's a hard no. No, no. But I wanted you to see her reaction because I was like, okay, she's listening. We got to do this because she, like, we've been talking for the last hour or whatever. I just called you. This is Darcy, not not Lindsay. I don't know who Lindsay is. I don't know so, <laughs> um, and she was all, I have twelve more minutes. I'm like, can you please listen to it so we can go live? Because <laughs> I so have been dying. I have I listened to this weeks ago, and I'm like. Are you going to finish this any day now? Like, I would love you to listen. Well, um, to be fair, I've been on the freaking phone with like, I don't know, 400 different people in the last week, last three weeks. <laughs> like when Monroe came out, I was like, I downloaded the day it came out at my chiropractic appointment. Like, and everyone was like, I mean, they all knew that I was going to be reading it. Like they were surprised I didn't have my headphones in. Like everybody asked me about it. I'm like. To get ready for this book, I have to finish the book that I'm on. I have 36 minutes left in this book. So I'm going to finish that book on the way home. And then I'm going to start this book. And then like everything happened. And I have been on the phone almost nonstop since that time. And so like yesterday I was heat pressing and I was like, Ooh. every time I get in the car and like go anywhere, my poor husband is catching like 20 minutes here and like 10 minutes there and five minutes here. When he's like, you're going to have to, he, and he'll pause it and he goes, gonna have to explain some things <laughs> because he's actually listened to five or six of them so like he's he knows quite a bit and then of course because i'm just like oh and i tell him all the things like he uh -huh. knows all the stuff so uh -huh. Uh -huh. so now he's like super involved and i am so is that the next is that the next book is that who's the next i book? don't know she hasn't said all right so before we go in for farther i'm gonna write this in the description too this broadcast contains spoilers. So spoilers, you, lots of spoilers. Yeah, all if the spoilers. you have not listened to or read Monroe, you stop watching us now. Come back later, because uh, this contains spoilers. All right, so yes. um, you have been warned. This is your exit stage right, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you soon. Everybody else. Oh my God, is it everything you've been waiting for? Okay, there's so much here. There's Let's so much about... to digest. Oh my God, like you guys, this is our first conversation about Monroe. So you have to, we're going to be all over the place. Just we go haven't with even it. like, yeah, just go with it. Just go right, with it. I'll let, I'll let you start. Okay, I'm so, so I've been dying to talk about this. Okay, so I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this or not, but Cressley Cole is really good about parody in her relationships throughout, like also by, excuse this, this is just like, pretend um <laughs> just saw that it's like I a disaster back there it's fine it. um there, we, there go. we go um so she's really good about parody in all of her um matchups and all of her mateships she's really good about parody and that starts as early as uh lachlan and emma because in lachlan and emma's story you know like a women where their mates bite so that everyone knows that she's taken but Lachlan, it like, is it, I think it's, it's not Gareth that says it. I'm, no, because it's not Gareth. It's uh, uh, Bowen. Um, Bowen says to him, you wear her bite. And he says proudly. Of course I do. And so like the parody, there's always some parody in their relationship. And I feel like that's a very important thing. Um, it's not like none of these women are wilting flowers none of them i mean like regan throws cars for fun right. and makes demons eat hubcaps i mean just saying um well, even, even uh Kadian's wife like she seems holly like is like all the she, things she is great but she starts off like you think she's this like and she's not your little thing and she's not that moment, that moment in that story where she's like, she escapes Groot 
Yes. Thinks that Katie Ann's betrayed her, escapes Groot, and then sees like the horror of this empty of the empty town and what these people had gone through. And she hears the Wendigos and she's like, I'm a Fury and a Valkyrie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Come, let's go. <laughs> Bring it, bitch. Let's go. She's like, <laughs> you. Yeah. Nah. Yep. Yeah. And like, I love that they call her Holly the Bright, which is mm-hmm. great. But like, deep hearts, deep hearts for Holly and the fact that she's just like, I'm out. I'm going to, like, I will literally, I will literally kill all the Vendigos. Yes. And then just like head north. Why not? <laughs> um, then when Katie on shows up, no, like get out, hard pass, bye. Yeah. Right, um, right. But like there's always parody in everything they do. Like um all all the makeshifts, like Lachlan and Emma's are really it's really obvious because like he bites her, she bites him. That's one's really obvious, but like right. um uh Ridestrom and Sabine. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of parody there and you don't like, and he does all the things that she, you know, like the parody of like, he treats her the way she treated him. That parody of like leveling the field or whatever. Yeah. But my favorite dirty line dirty. in that one is when, um, Omar reads rides from his mind because he's trying to save her. And he finds out that she's not actually, they're not actually married mm-hmm. that rides from tricked her. And like when the battle's going on and she makes everyone invisible, also favorite scenes. I'm so proud because of Because Katie goes, this is awesome. That's my favorite. <laughs> um, like that part, literally, I just rewind and yes. listen to. I love yeah. it. Um, yeah. And like he traces them to his room, like their room. And and she's crying. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I swear I'll never lie to you ever again. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Right? Like he's just yeah. so contrite. And she's yeah. like. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I know. Like, it's just so good. Like, yeah. she she knows that he's rides from the good. She knows that he's a good guy. She knows that he's Team Veritas. Like, she knows all of that. But at the same time, he's like, she's still going to steal things. Yeah, yeah. He's a sorcerer. And, like, then the parody of, like, he knows that she's going to steal things, but, like, I'm a king. So then he orders all of those beautiful pieces made by um, Bettina. So like the okay, pause for a second because I'm so impressed that you have all these names like off the top of your head because you did not prep for this like this I is didn't amazing because I'd be you like just, you know like, that one <laughs> remember in my previous life I yeah. did teach literature <laughs> I'm super impressed so I also did just listen to it <laughs> um, but so like there's so much parody in all of the relationships. Like there, it's never someone gives up everything of who they are for the other person. I feel like that's really important. Um, like with Rune and Joe, with Lachlan and Emma, Regan and I always want to call him the Vikings name, but that's not his name. Chase, uh, Chase uh, yeah. Regan and Chase, which I don't care for Chase. Like he's not my favorite guy, obviously. Mm-hmm. I don't care for him, but like she doesn't change who she is. He really doesn't change who he right. is either. I like, love but the that's who they that are. She, she loves the imperfections in him that yes. the original Berserker didn't have. Aiden exactly. the Berserker. Right. And so and, I'm impressed myself that I just pulled out that name. You but did. I think that's my favorite part is when it's still Chase, Declan Chase, yeah. that she's like, I, I love this guy. I, yeah, also, like, I love this version. This I don't love version, Aiden. Yeah. I love this version. Yeah. Right. I also love when she was like talking to Odin, like praying, like, why? You know, can I yeah. have just one? And I'm just, I mean, I just sobbed. I was like, oh my God. Oh, I know. But I love, but I also love like in that one, it was almost like he had to practice to get it right. Does that make yeah. sense? Like, yeah. Because she talks about like this version, like Aiden was this and this guy, I don't know all of them. This yeah. guy was this, ver- like he was all like passion and love and this guy yeah. was friendship that and this guy Spaniard. was a warrior. Yeah. And then the and pirate. Then Chase was all of them. Yes. It was like yeah. he had to figure it out. It was almost yeah. like he needed the time to practice to be the right version of himself for yeah. Regan. Yeah. Um, so I really like that. I really like the parody that she does um with all of her with all of her mateships. Um I do genuinely believe that Bertil is um Nix's mate. I believe that Bertil is um um, the Morior that we all are assuming that is her mate, right? 
Um, I believe that Bertil visits her because when Bertil is there, she is lucid. When Bertil is not there, she is not. Okay. So like in Regan's story, when they're in Regan's car that she just demolishes mm -hmm. and Chase is so upset about it because it's like a $300,000 car. And it's she just, she's driving backwards. Oh yeah. She's, she's like, whatever, backwards. it's cool. <laughs> um, Bertil is on her shoulder and she looks at Chase and she says, you're late. And then later when she's in the car talking to Chase because she knows the bug is there, she's all over the place. Bertil's not there. Okay. At, at the that. end of Monroe, when she's talking to Lothair, she is very consistent. She's on, she's very clear. Bertil's on her shoulder. Whenever you see Bertil, Nyx is un uncanny and very lucid. All right. When so, Bertil is not there, she's always like, was that in the past or in the future? Right. right when is that? Right. Like she can't see it. But when so, Bertil is there, she's like. Yeah. My thing with Nyx. You know, yeah, obviously, I think she's been setting everything up for the accession, accession yeah. and everything. But the fact that her name is Nyx, her name is Phoenix. Okay, which I only caught on this reread. Oh, like, that's funny. So I, I, I only caught it like, like when, that has to be play into this somehow. Right. So like is she going to burn it all down so that she can rebirth? Well, and she like, wants to be a goddess. going to die. And she wants to be a goddess. She's the god of yeah, accession. I think she has to die to be a goddess. I think and you're she, probably well because the death, she death is the catalyst for any immortal to become an immortal. Yes, yes. So I think she will die. She's a phoenix. She has to rise from the ash. Yeah, I think, I think she has she to rise from the ash of the accession to become uh -huh. the god of accessions. I think so too. Um, Speaking of raising from the dead to become other things, I'm really surprised that in this story, uh, Ren did not become a Valkyrie when she did what she did to save everybody in the forest when she died in in that one version of the story okay so i've thought that too well, i the, thought the, about that the trick is though one she didn't worship odin oh okay okay so that's part of it and odin sleeps yes odin and freya are asleep so they wouldn't have been able to act in that but had that happened if they had struck her with lightning she would have gone to valhalla her child would have been a Val valkyrie she would never have been able to leave valhalla only the children can got it they have three parents so the yep. warrior women who are struck by lightning stay in Valhalla and their children can come to Got Earth. It. But then they Got can it. never that makes return. Sense. Okay, I'm with it now. I get that. Um, but I really liked that the the parody of in Monroe that he was willing to do anything. She could become anything. He didn't care. He would twist the ring, whatever. He was all about it. Can and we talk about was, that moment? What? Can we talk about that moment when he twisted, when he said what he was going to wish, when he was going to twist the ring? Like, I was like, oh my God, he's going to do it. Uh, yeah, and I had, I had thought about it. I was like, Oh, no. I thought about it the whole time. And then I was like, please don't make one of the twins human. I was like, please don't do that. Don't do that. And yeah, well, I get the gesture of it. And like, I, I, I mean, I, when I heard that, I was like, okay, she's going to do it. She's going to do it. Like he's, he's going to be a human. Like he's going to be mortal. He's going to be mortal. And then I was like, wait, Dorada would not make a deal with the mortal. So she won't let the ring turn. Yes. yes. Dorada would never have allowed that. Um, two. I'm cleaning my glasses. Yeah. Will couldn't, Will's beast couldn't survive if Monroe's beast was gone. Oh. Because okay. they said that because they're identical, their beast is actually a shared beast. Like. Right. 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 They're linked. So then he would have been consigning his brother to doom, which obviously mm -hmm. he can't do. I mean, he spent 900 years keeping his brother okay-ish. Right. right. Hey, you ready yeah. for it? It's like high definition. I know. All right. right. So, it's like um, but I really liked that. I liked that he was the one who had to turn Kearney. I liked, I loved that she took her time. Like, she was, she was, she, I mean, like they never raise after three days, like all of that. And she took seven and it's just like, she's so stubborn. Like they talk in all through the first, beginning of the book, how stubborn she is, how stubborn she is, how stubborn she is. Like you can't out stubborn Kearney. I'm like, oh, I haven't met a world. I haven't met a like, okay. Um, <laughs> and so like the stubborn, the stubborn, the stubborn, the stubborn. And I was like, she promised she'd come back. Right. She's never broken her word to him. She's promised she'll come back. She'll come back. 
And like when he's on the phone with Loa, I was like, turn around, turn around, right. turn around, right? Yeah. Because he's he kept like he said he, he the whole time when he was like he thought his his brain was playing tricks on him. Her eyes fluttered. He thought he heard her heartbeat. He thought he heard her breathe. Like all of those were kind of like she's mm, nope, not quite yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Coming back. I'm gonna cut. Nope. Hang on. Yep. And so, like, when she came back, I was like, oh, of course. And I was like, it, I said, it's going to happen one of two ways. Either she's going to come back and she's going to have complete control of her beast because she took the extra time, which could have happened. Yeah. Or she's going to come back and it's going to be like a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I love the moment she had with her beast, by the way. I love that, was that the it best. was like. Cooperation was such, instead of dominance. Yeah. Absolutely. I was like, yes, that is exact. That's how it should be. It was like watching the, the difference between how a man approaches the situation, like how, how most males yeah. approach the situation and how, how most females approach. It's like, let's, you know, this doesn't have to be battle and bruise to the death. No. I mean, we can cooperate and work together. You know, I just, I loved it. Yeah. And I loved, I loved, I loved that when she had that moment with her beast, her beast was like, try try to control me. Like she could see it in the beast's face that she was like, that's not who this is. That's not who yeah. we are. And yeah. that makes sense because Kearney wasn't, is not like, yeah, you can control me. She's like, I live by my own terms. I've been uh -huh. in charge of leagues of people. Uh -huh. I've killed uh -huh. hundreds of immortals. <laughs> try me. Right. Let me bro. Right. Um. So it makes sense that her beast is the same way. Like Monroe is talking about all that control and that like that leashing and he's always in control and he has to control everything. So of course his beast is like, Nope, we're doing it this way. Nope. We're doing it. Like that makes sense. Yeah. So it made sense that her beast is a reflection of who she is. Like, yeah, that's gotta be the way it is. Um, and so like the parody that she was turned by him, I really enjoyed because Lothair didn't, I mean, Lothair turned, I love it Ellie. when he was like so like she doesn't even want me. It's like I'm third best in the room, <laughs> like whatever. When he was like, I thought it was awesome. Right. I, I'm here for the the bromance between Monroe and Lothair. Like, and I, I do I, so I beautiful. hope Valerie is right, and I hope that Monroe's <laughs> kids are mates to Lothair's. That seems I, only fitting. I freaking love it. So I was like, this is brilliant. Like, this is brilliant. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and like the, the revelation, I guess, I, I mean, I don't think that anybody who's been reading IAD for any period of time was surprised by the fact that, um, Kristoff is Fury's mate. I don't think that anybody was surprised. What did you do when you read that? I'll tell you what happened in my mind. Uh, I went, duh. Did you go duh? I yeah. went, I was on a plane to Mexico. No, home from Mexico. Home from Mexico. Home from Mexico. And I grasped John like this on the plane. And he was like, you know, pulling his headphones off. Like, what, what, what? And I was like, oh. And he was like, what? And I was like, she's his mate. And he was like, are you talking about what? Stop it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know. Okay, so. Like, Something's wrong. But I was, I, but then in my brain, I was like, did I miss it? Did I not read something right? Did, was it said somewhere else? Because it was so nonchalant, just very mad. It was so nonchalantly like, done. And I think, yeah, I think that's because Cressley Cole, I really do believe that, like, based on what I've seen in the group that we're in, where Cressley's in there, she doesn't interact very often, but she's in there and she reads everybody's comments. I think she knows that, like, we have quite a few things figured out because, like, we know who, what she, like, Fury would hate being mated to a king the king of the vampires more than anything so just right. like lachlan hates vampires and lothair hates mortals like that's the thing the thing you hate is the thing you have to get over like yeah. the whole kind of i mean for lack of a better word the the forcing someone to overcome their prejudices and xenophobia is very prevalent in the in immortals after dark like you know, lycas and vampires, lycae and witches, like all of the sorcery and demons, like she's making you overcome the thing that you hate. I think that that's really an important thing that's kind of not necessarily the point, but is also like, yeah, <laughs> Wash yourself. in there. And I think that that's really important, but like, I think she knew that we all knew that Kristoff was Fury's mate. Like I, so I think she didn't make it a big deal because 
She's like, anybody who's gotten this, like we're on book what, 19? Yeah. She's like, anybody who's gotten this far knows. I yeah. feel like she knows that. And I so know I how she made it a nonchalant out. thing so we could all be like, nailed it. Yeah. I want to know how he found out. Like, I want to, I want to know that. Yeah. Part. I think, I don't know. I, my guess Has is Valerie. Always know? If I had, if I had to guess, it has to be Valerie. That would make sense. Because remember in, um, that would make sense. In Shadow's Claim, right? In Shadow's Claim, uh, when, no. Yes. In Shadow, yeah. I don't know. No. I don't know where you're going it's with this. There. Hang on. It's in Lo- I like, I just like binged. Okay. Like, nah. Um, <laughs> so in Lothair, when Ellie goes to Daisha, like uh-huh. after the whole like heart finger, I'm sorry, I bought your mountain and the other two, your family's going to be taken care of, but I can't live in a trailer. I love that trick, by the way. Ellie nailed it. Um, <laughs> when Ellie goes to Daisha and, um, the youngest of the the families um the the girl no right? her, her brother not Celian. Oh. oh uh um oh my god cassian's mate what's mercio. his name mercio mercio thank you huh oh, losing my mind yeah. Um, cause that's the one book I haven't read. I haven't read yeah. that one. I haven't been able to get my hands on a copy. I haven't either. That's why I, I was like, it was it in there and I just didn't hear it? No, it's Shadows. It's, um, Shadows Seduction, I think. I haven't yeah. been able to get a hold of it somewhere. I, yeah, I can't find it. Either. And like everybody in the group has read it. I'm so mad. Anyway, um, I think it's a novella. I don't think it's very long. No, um, I want to read it. Anyways, go ahead. But so anyway, Mercio, his heart's slowly stopping and he's upset because like, I don't know when I'm going to find my mate. It took Lothair how many years? Like, you know, Stelian still doesn't have a mate, you know. At the time, they didn't know that. That's um, fine. They didn't know that Trahan had a mate. They were all just like, he abandoned her. It's cool. Um, and uh, so she says to him, she's like, oh, you should have Bailey re-roll the bones to find out how long it will be. Because sometimes a countdown can help. So uh-huh. my guess is that when she asked Lothair, did you did you kidnap Kristoff? And Lothair was like, yeah, I did that. Because that's how Lothair is. Uh-huh. I mean, it's how Trahan is too. Yeah, I right. did that. Yeah. Um, and she was like, you're going, no, like, he's not, your brother is not going to live in a, dun- no, like, I can hear her being like, Leo, <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear her saying, Leo, you're going to go make peace with your brother and then you're going to bring him up here and you're going to treat him like family because that's who he is. He's your family. You don't treat family like that. I can you, hear it. You sound exactly like Ellie. I do live in Nashville. I know. I know. <laughs> Grew up here. If I talk to someone with a thick Southern accent, it gets real bad. Um, and I spoke to someone with a very thick Southern accent yesterday. So, um, but like, I can hear her saying that. And so when he does find out, like, I can, I figure that she probably was like, Ellie being Ellie, welcome to Daisha. Like, here are your quarters. I'm sorry, Leo's kind of a jerk. You have to tell him when he's doing that because he's kind of dense. Right. right. Um. And I feel like Ellie was like, well, Baylor, you might be able to tell you who your, who your mate is because of course he's anxious to find his bride. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if I, my only thought is it has to be Baylory. I like this Bay- theory. I like this whole story. You just went down. Cresley, if you're watching, I like that. That works. That sounds great. <laughs> it just seems like it makes the most sense. Like if there's anything that Cresley Cole does very, very, and there's a lot that she does very well, a lot really well, so much well, um, is that, it's, it doesn't ever feel like it's out of left field. Like Nix knows these things and it is very well established why Nix knows these things. It's very well established why Bowen is the way he is. And then like the out of the blue thing was like, oh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like there's enough backstory on every tiny little detail that when you get there, you're like, I remember that now. And yeah. so like things in book two don't, I mean, like, let's see, Gareth and Lucia's Lucia story or Lucia, sorry, he calls her Lucia. Isn't that um, six? Is book six. And I think it's six, yeah. Six, I think, something like that. I'll, I'll look, I'll look. Okay, so talking. I think it's like five or six. I want to say five or six. Um, so Gareth and Lucia, Lucia's book is five or six, and something in Gareth and Lucia's book that proves to be instrumental in book 19? See, and here's something off. interesting, is I remember in book one, when uh, Lachlan mentioned that Monroe's mate was a Harridan. I remember him saying I that. I do too. 
I remembered that. Yeah, because someone told him that. And I remember yeah. um, there was something I, there was something in, I remember reading Shadows Claim and I didn't write it down. I remember there was something in Shadows Claim and I was like, ah, that's from this. Like, I remember it going, uh, we've seen that before. And I can't remember what it was. Now I can't remember what it was. But like, you know, it, it's just, there's so many things that she puts together in such a way that like the world building and character development are so incredibly done that like, I mean, is it a romance novel? Yes. Do I love an HEA? Of course. Do I right, right. love it when people find their other half? Of course. That's why we're here. But the reality is I'm now so, it was, so it was nine. It was nine. Yeah. So nine, nine to 19, 10 books, uh -huh. 10 books. Um, and Dorada from book nine plays a part in Lothair, in Lothair, which is 10. And also, it 10? no, it's not 10. 10. It's, it's, it's 11. No, it's 12. Okay. Hold on. That's nine, 10, 11. Yeah. He's 12. He's 12. So Shadow book nine plays a part in book 12, plays a part in book, uh, is important. She's not in it, but Dorada is important in Shadow's Claim, which is 16. Uh, 13, 13. And then again in 19, 15, 16, also, 13. Yeah. Okay. So the thing that I was, mm -mm, I have questions. Okay. So Nick, she also she, plays a role in wicked abyss, right? Because they talk about her owning. Yeah. Cause that's why, yeah, that's why, uh, the dark sky people, I can't think of their name all Lanthe uh, and Thronos. Lanthe and, uh, Thronos. Are so, yeah. They're so, because they, the, um, my gosh, Dorada has the book the on book. them. And the book plays a part in 19 because she's collecting yeah. favors from yes. the Veritas players yeah. to try. Yeah. She's, yeah. we're going to see what happens with Dorada. I'm interested to see. Um, but I do, this was like a kind of out of like, well, <laughs> pause. Like I listened to it three times because I was like, did I hear that correctly? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, wait. Uh, mm. Huh. <laughs> um, so Nyx goes to the Pravis essentially headquarters, you know, like wherever they call that is. Oh, and, are we talking? Yes. And yes. And she's talking to Portia uh -huh. and Amberine. Uh-huh. Who is magically still alive? Uh-huh. How? She was beheaded by Chase. You got me. So here's my theory. I have a theory. Okay. So Portia controls rock. Emberine obviously is the queen of fire or flames, whatever. Uh -huh. My thought is that it's really hard to kill Emberine because if she's feeling a great deal of emotion, they say that her body glows with fire. I wonder if her head was cauterized and she regenerated a body from her brain. Ooh, that's a, that's a good theory. That's really good. Things I think about while sewing. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I love that, that little bit of storyline though, by the way, I love Yeah, that. but I, I also thought it was really interesting. Chose to Go ahead. die together. Like yes. I I love that. Yes. Because if God's honest truth, like I would choose that with John. Not Same. something horrific, but I would choose to be together. Same. Like I love that. Yeah. And I think that that was and I also think it's really interesting. And I think that Nix is right. Like you can't be pure evil. You love someone. You yeah. can't. Yeah. So we also know that Lothair is not pure evil because Ellie. Yes. Um, you know, like the snake-like creatures, probably pure evil. I'm going to go with, yeah, probably pure evil. Um, just going to throw that out there. And, uh, but I was very surprised, but I, I thought it was really interesting. And it's a very kind of quick point in the book, very kind of early on even, that Nick says that she's going to need all of the, Ver it doesn't matter if you're Veritas or Pravis, it will take all of them to defeat the Morior. Mm -hmm. So she obviously knows that the Morior is coming to destroy the planet. Uh -huh. she's seen obviously the demise of other worlds at the hands of the Morior. Uh -huh. I'm guessing she's also seen Joe's planet, Joe and Thad's planet. Oh be yeah. Destroyed. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure that that's something she's seen. So she's, if she's seen all of these worlds destroyed, she knows what she's fighting. But I also think that they're going to come to destroy the world. And they might get close to succeeding. And I think Nick sacrifices herself 
to save the world. Yep. And comes back as a god. Because yep. I think Nix is going to have to be a god to be, again, that parody that I was talking about, to be an equal to Orion. Uh, or Orion. Orion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think Orion, because we don't know what Orion is. We don't know if he's a shifter, a vampire. We don't know what he is. He's just Orion. Right. And so I think that Orion, I think that Orion and might be. sleep still. Like he hasn't really been in form. Right. So I think that Orion. I think that Orion is Bertil. And that wasn't my original thought. Like I read that in a group somewhere and I was like, oh. But then when I was rereading it, I was like, she's lucid. Bertil is there. She's not. Bertil is not. She's lucid. Bertil is there. She's not. She's not. Um, the one time where she's lucid where Bertil is not there is when she's in Dacia. Um, when she's talking to Lothair after she sleeps. Yeah. Or, or no, she before she takes a nap and right. Lothair wakes up after dreaming Ellie's dream. Yeah. Um, like her life. Um, when he went before she sleeps, she said, because I'm having this conversation with you, it's costing these people um, because it was taking so much effort for her to be lucid. Uh -huh. um, and she never makes that she never makes that stipulation when Bertil's around that it's costing her. It only now, costs her when it. he's not there. At the end of Monroe, when he when uh, um, Lothair talks about Bertil being a cock block, like, I was like, "That's hilarious." That and really I was hilarious. like, "Well, if, and then I was like, if it is though, like if it is Orion, uh, makes sense. I think it's that hilarious. Would make sense. I was laughing so much. I mean, Lothair is awesome." He's just so awesome. Lothair I and Ellie. I mean, um, the whole thing. It was just, I love the comic. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I burst out laughing when uh, Kearney threw the knife at La Dorada. And La Dorada was like, a knife? Really? <laughs> I was just like, because I just could see the shock of, really? Like, do you know what I am? And she's like. Uh, 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 it's not just a knife, you know, but yeah. that brings us to the thing of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. If La Dorada absorbed or took in all the stuff because she was able to um, defeat the Wendigo's uh, poison from her, did she also absorb Kearney's sword jazz? I almost said Belt. sword jizz. Her sword jizz? Did she absorb the sword jizz? These are the questions, people. This is headline. Is the jizz absorbed? Was there enough um, jizz to make a difference? I don't know that Dorada would have control over that because the spell isn't inherently evil. And okay. she's the queen of evils. But it just talks about what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So could it just right. make her stronger? Or does it mean that she's absorbed the Wendigo's ability to change people? Right. Is her blood now poison? Oh, gosh. Poison? I don't know. These are the questions. I don't know. These are the questions. These but I will questions. say, so speaking of that scene. Yeah. So um, I was doing an excellent job of procrasta working where I don't want to do a certain thing. So I find a million other things that could probably wait, but I do those instead. Yes. Um, it's very productive. Just so you know, I'm <laughs> very good at it. Um, and so like, I am, I was cleaning my house, like scrubbing my baseboards, cleaning my house to avoid the work I should be doing. I'm doing great. And, um, so I have my headphones in and I'm just like scrubbing. I'm on my hand, like I'm on, I'm sitting down, I'm scrubbing baseboards, I'm dusting books and shelves and all the things. And we get to that part where they're in Dacia and Dorada shows up and I'm like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Right. And Kearney's like, get out of here. I want nothing to do with you. I can feel that you're evil. Like, cause she has that like instinct. Uh -huh. She had uh -huh. an instinct beforehand too. Do you think it's important? Like Kearney had an instinct about people, whether they were good or evil before she had the instinct. Also, I feel very uh, interesting little tidbit that might play a part later. Um, and so I just, I refuse to believe that that's just like the only thing that it's going to be. Like I, I refuse. That's just not how Cressley Cole writes. It's just not. Um, and so you know, I'm like, oh, get out of here. And then he shows up and he signs the ledger and he has the ring on it. I'm like, don't do it. You can't. I was like, he can't become mortal because then he could no longer be in the story. And we know that Will can't survive without his brother. So this can't happen. I'm like, how are we getting out of this? Oh, my God. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then he, he's like, you have to. She's like, you have to trust me. And he's like, OK, I will. And so, of course, then he's like, we'll figure it out another way. And then the Dacians trace in. Oh, I do love the Dacians. And. <laughs> They're all like fighting the Wendigos and fighting her and da 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 da. And I was like, yes, right? Because Dacians, like, right. 
Trahan. Yes. I have a very I special love, heart for Trahan. Okay? Love me some Trahan. Absolutely. I love me some Trahan. Okay. Very deep in my heart. Very deep. Very deep. Yes. Um, so Trahan, like Stellan, like all, or Stelian, all of them are here. And I'm like, she don't stand no chance. I mean, like, I know she's like a god or whatever, but like she don't stand no chance. Okay. Like that. Right, right, right. And so then the wind goes and I'm like, you know what? I'm like, my first concern was that what Ellie was going to get injured in some way. Like she was going to get bumped or whatever, like break something. And Monroe was going to lose his whole mind. And then it releases beat like a whole thing. Right. And so like when she shows up and he, and so the first, so I'm, my husband's in his office working uh -huh. because he's actually being productive and I'm scrubbing baseboards. We're doing great. And so like, I have my headphones in. I have noise canceling headphones. So like, I don't hear myself very well either because they're noise canceling. And so I hear, and I was like, yes, right. And then like, there's like three or four <laughs> minutes because like he turns the ring back over. I'm like, yes, right. Like, yeah. yay. And then Lothair gets controlled by Dorado. Like, oh, no, no, no. Right. And so I'm, right. I'm saying this out loud. Because I'm used to do it. I'm like used to listening to these books in my studio where like there's no one around. It's just me. And like yeah. you can't really, it no, it doesn't matter. Right. So I talk to my book because I'm that person. And so I'm like, no, no, no. And then like the more Wendigos. And then I'm like, yes, she left, right? Because Kearney throws the blade. I'm like, yes. Like I actually cheered. And then he turns around and he's scored by a Wendigo. Yeah. And I went, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lothair whispers, and I'm like, oh, wait, Lothair knows how to fix it, right? Yes. And yes. then Kearney gets clawed, and I was like, fuck. Right. Like, right. Sorry. Sorry. That's a very strong word. Um, it, I was, I understand. I was, but there that too. was my response. And so my husband peeks around the corner and he goes, you okay? <laughs> you good? You and I'm right? like, yeah, I'm listening to my book. He's like, some, I'm going to, I'm going to hear about that in a minute. I'm like, if you want to, you can hear about it. And he's like, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> he's like sounds like maybe you need another 10 15 minutes before you give me the rundown i'm like mm, probably <laughs> um and so like but i was like mm, this sounds delightful um so like if you were ever just like to record me in my studio i sound like a crazy person uh-huh um me because too. i talked to my book like especially especially because when i was rereading it like knowing what happens we're like Lucy is like, oh, if I, you know, if I, if I gave myself to you, then I wouldn't have my archery. I'm like, yes, yeah, you would. Mm -hmm. And then like, Nix is like, oh no, you always had it. Like it was yours years ago. She, she was one of the ones who said that you should have to go satisfy, um, what's his name? And she was like, yes. I was like, you gonna die, boo. <laughs> you gonna die. <laughs> not or not, you gonna die. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um. You know, like all those things of like, oh, you can't put the beast back in the cage when he's that upset. I'm like, yes, yeah, she can. Lucy, it does it. Right. You know, like all of those things where I'm like, you know, because we know. So I'm like talking to the book the whole time. And Dave's like, ah, like, and he can tell by what I'm saying. He's like, mm, look, there's at it again, huh? I'm like, mm, yeah. <laughs> I think that's funny. Well, so, again. Um, but I will say one of the things that I think this is my personal theory about romance novels in general, not just Immortals After Dark, but more just romance novels in general. Yes. So we all show up for the happily ever after, the person who finds their other half, right? We are all here for it. I'm here for it. But I really think it's super funny that everyone thinks that romance novels are garbage. Like oh, they're garbage wonderful. Literature. It's been labeled as garbage literature for so long. And I think it's super funny oh, yeah. because it's not. Because Even my athletes, a couple of my athletes are like, oh, do you read that smut? I was like, I hate the word smut, by the way. I'm yeah. like, I read really good books, like with really great stories. Right. And, and like, sex is natural, people. Sex is in the Bible, y'all. Sex is natural. Sex is fun. Sex is one on one. <laughs> Did you, that took a while for you to get Sex is natural. Sex is fun. Sex is best when it's one on one. All right. Um, but I think it's really interesting that like people, I think that there's a lot of very, very good authors writing romance. Yes. Um, Penny, and I think yeah. some of it is because otherwise they wouldn't get published. I mean, I'm genuinely, I mean, 
there are a lot of women who are writing very good sci-fi, very good fantasy, but without that sexual element to it, they're deemed that it's not good enough. And so they, I mean, like it's, I mean, not that I'm saying that it's easy to write anything. It's very hard to write a novel. That's not what I'm saying. I think it's just really interesting that everybody's deemed it like it's not like I love Immortals After Dark. And like I read the first couple because I'm like, oh, this is steamy. I like it. Right. But after like book four, I was like, wait, OK, how is this going to work out at the accession? Like it really yeah. became a I need to know what happens. And like as excited as I was about Monroe and I was very excited about Monroe because after I read McCree for the first time and that freaking epilogue uh -huh. and I called you and I'm like. So where's that book? And you were like, it hasn't come out yet. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> thanks. And, and then that, my ever. friend, was when I recommended to you that you read Throne of the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Moss. Because that the last evil. of that book wasn't out yet. And well, what was evil about that is it wasn't even just that the Kingdom of Ash wasn't out yet. Tower of Dawn wasn't out yet. And so I went where I had to read Tower of Dawn about a guy that I did not like at that point. And I was like, why am I reading this? Which turned out to be an excellent book. Like I was very excellent happy book. I read it. Excellent book. But I was very disappointed because it didn't have the main character in it nearly as much as I wanted it to be. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that was evil. That was evil. Yeah. <clears throat> no, not fun. That's all right. Um, but I think that it's really, I think that it's, I think it's also really interesting that I, not necessarily in Immortals After Dark, but other books that I've read, um, Oh, I can't think of her name. Uh, Marked Men. Saints of Denver. Oh, Jay Crownover. Thank you, Jay Crownover. Like, there's so many people who are dealing with, like, really hard issues that, like, mm -hmm. people are not perfect. People are broken. And that doesn't mean that they're less good. I mean, she does write about some bad boys, which I don't, I don't hate. Okay. I liked, I liked the point. It did. Yeah. I yes. liked it. Um, but, like, it gives people an opportunity to see themselves. And see that, like, you can be in a relationship, but, like, it's give and take. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's a really important thing. And I think that it's really important to acknowledge the fact that, like, despite the fact that it's a romance novel, there's a lot more going on here. And, like, yeah. if you really look at it, there's maybe, like, in Monroe, there was maybe, what, like, five? Five sex scenes? Six? If that. Like, like there weren't even that, that many. There was a lot of, there was a lot of foreplay working up to where it yeah. really was. But, but it, like, there's really only many. one or two, like, major, like, sex, yeah. like, there's a lot of, and, like, it's discussed, like, they have, yeah. they make love every night, like, it's discussed. Yeah. But it's not like you're in the bedroom every time, yeah. and it's not like every third page is a sex scene, like, it's not. Which, that's not story. bad either, if that's what you want to read. I mean, right. there's, not, oh, God, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a story. Nothing wrong. There's a story, it just happens to have sex in it. Mm -hmm. I would like to so know. So does life. <laughs> If you're lucky. So do movies. Like, I love people like, oh, you read garbage novels. I'm like, you watch garbage movies. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, did you watch Friends? Were they not getting yeah. it on with each other? A lot? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. It's it's just, it's all of that is interesting to me. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the, the quality of the, the intellect and the the work that goes into writing these novels are is amazing to me. And there are some amazing, wonderful women. And a lot of them are going out and self-publishing now, taking mm -hmm. control. They're becoming boss babes, which you and I both totally appreciate and understand completely. Like yeah. there's just, it's such, I'm just, I'm here for it. I love it so I very do. much. And I like, love it so much. I think that like, cause I think, um, I think Jennifer Armentrout publishes herself. I she think that she's self published. Um, and I think that, um, oh Amelia my God. Amelia Hutchins, is that, was it Hutchins? She does too. Penny I just does her it. own. I the book. Sarah J. Moss, I think, does too. Uh, I'm not sure. Amelia Hutchins does. Sarah J. Oh my gosh. That's going to be our next one, guys. That's what yeah. I, we're going to, we're going to start after this. Are we, are, I'm going to reread of Crescent today? City. Well, no, I have to finish Crescent City. I have to. I okay, know you're not you doing a reread. But I've got to reread it. I've got five hours left. So let me finish that today. Okay. We'll start that tomorrow. I have to do um, all the stuff we talked about on our phone call before this live thing today. Yeah, so yeah. I uh, can't so, listen while I do that. Um, I, I hear you. I just, I'm, I'm amazed. Like when people read something like The Lord of the Rings. Okay. That is a classic. It's beautiful. It's so wonderful. The world building, the description, the, you feel like you're, everyone knows exactly what Minas Tirith looks like. This is what Minas yeah. Tirith looks like because yeah. the description is right there. Like. This is what Shalob looked like. Yep. As hard as that is to look at, 
We all know what she looks like. Um, yeah. We know what, you know, we know how Gimli looks, we, all of that. And we know what the world is. There's a map. We have all of these things. And when people look at that, they're like, oh, it takes so much effort to do that. Absolutely, it does. It absolutely does. Tolkien, now, my husband is a Tolkien scholar, so I have a little bit more knowledge here than most average people. Okay. But like, The Lord of the Rings, the three books that are The Lord of the Rings, um, you know, Fellowship, Tower, Return of the King. Mm -hmm. um, those are three books. He wrote The Hobbit, so that's four. Mm -hmm. So he wrote four books. He built that entire world and he did it in four books. He also wrote lots of other things like the Silmarillion. He wrote a lot of other compendiums to the Lord of the Rings that are talk about different ages, the age of dwarves, the age of elves, the age, because they were moving into the age of men. That's what the Lord of the Rings was, was moving to the age of men, which is supposed to bring us to our current age. That's what it is. So when you think about someone who built a world that's that in depth and people look at it and they're like, oh, they've made this epic movie. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm, it's true. Beautiful. I love Lord of the Rings. We own all the things of all the Lord of the Rings. So much Lord of the Rings in my house. But like, if I look at that and then I look at even Harry Potter, I love seven Harry books, Potter. right? And I look at Harry Potter and things that are mentioned in passing in book one are important in the last book. Yes. And I look at, and then I look at like Immortals After Dark, 19 books so far, so far, she's still writing, hopefully. Um, I don't feel like the story is over. She says she has lots of stories left. So I think that there's still lots to go before the accession ends. Um, I think, and I look at that and I'm like 19 books. Do you know how much pre-planning, how much outlining, how much storyboarding you have to do to be able to say, okay, in this book, in book nine, Gareth and Lucia are going to use this cup. This cup's going to get eaten by a caiman. It's going to be important. We need a way that they'll be able to find it in book 19. In book 19, but I can't do that yet because Will has to maintain his beast. Will has to control his beast, which means Will has to overcome all the things that Will has to overcome, which are quite a few. Yes. Um, and rightly so. That is a lot of trauma to suffer. Um, he has to overcome all of those things and overcome his prejudice to be with his mate. Mm -hmm. So, and then she turns it. I just, the one thing I oh, do yeah. really, I need... Well, I need to see. I, I'm just, I was sad it didn't happen in McCreeve. I was hoping I'd get a snapshot in Monroe. I'm holding out hope. Okay. For what? She was an Olympic level soccer player. Yes. She gets stronger every time she, she and both will get stronger every time they have sex. Uh -huh. Why is she not playing rugby with them against the Yes. Team? Yes. I'm still holding hope. I will see it. I happen. believe that Presley Cole will give happen. me this gift. I believe it in my heart and soul that I will see it. Because I was like, oh my God, she's going to play. Oh my God, she's going to play. She's going to kick so many butt. Like, I was so excited at the end of McCreeve. And then I got the epilogue that was the beginning of Monroe that was just not fair. And then, <laughs> I mean, six years. We waited six well, years. And so here's the cool thing. So you're talking about the storyboarding and planning and all this. Yeah. And she's doing all of that while working with the publisher. Yeah. Now she's separated from the publisher. Naomi mm -hmm. in our little group has mentioned that the Monroe, original Monroe story has changed. Uh -huh. Like she, she talked about how the original plan for the Monroe story is changed around probably to fit the new storyboard that she probably doesn't have to get approved by some Right, ho hum people at a at a publishing place. So right, who absolutely. knows where this could go now? Like I'm so excited about it. And like that's the other thing that people don't understand is like a lot of times authors don't have complete autonomy over their story. Mm -hmm. And like so where she like and I and this is it does not matter. This is my opinion and it's complete conjecture. And I do not expect Cressley Cole to give us any details about anything that happened in her life. It's not our business. It's not our business. Right. Whatever it was that she went through. I'm just glad she's through it. I'm glad she's okay. And I hope all of her family and loved ones are as well. That's yeah. all that matters that she's back, that she wants to keep doing this. I'm here for it. I right. will read whatever she puts out. 100%. Right. Um, but like she, she may not have, I, I really genuinely think that her choice to write uh shadow seduction, which is instead of being heteronormative is a homosexual book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I also think that she probably somewhere on her in her files or somewhere. I think um, Emberine and Portia's story exists as well. Okay, I think so. I can I see think that. So. I can't believe that she would not have had a story. I'm like, it might not be more than like a short story, but it right. exists. Like in her head, she knows that story. There's no way she yeah. doesn't. They've yeah. been in three books. There's no way that they do. She does not know that story. Right. Um, I think that when she was like, no, I'm going to write Shadow Seduction. And like, I think she probably did some things that they didn't super like. And she wasn't willing to compromise as much. And she's uh -huh. like, no, this is where the story needs to go. And I'm the author. I know best. And I feel like there was probably like, they were like, no, you're not going to do this. And so. I'm wondering if that was the line where they wanted Monroe to go a certain way. And she was like, that's not who Kearney is. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. I so want to read that book though. I haven't been able to. I mean, I, I would absolutely read it. Um, I'm very interested to see who's next. That's could, the question, right? Like, like in, the, so in the group that we talked about last time, if you guys don't already know, let me see if I can find the link to the group so you could go and join it if you want yeah. to. It's a private uh, group, uh, Immortals After Dark. And Naomi, well, it's, it's I, Cressley Cole after dark. It's Cressley Cole after dark because oh, they're also talking about, sorry. yeah, it's fine. They're also talking about the, um, Alcana Chronicles because yes. the last book of that is due out in August, September. Somewhere. I don't know, but I am here for it because I am so team death and I'm team ready death. to hear team, team death, death all the way. All right. Yes, you're right. Cressley Cole after dark. Um, but it's a private group and it's run by Naomi who works for Cressley Cole and Gina Showalter. Um, and so it's like, it's not just a fan group. You know what I mean? It's run by the actual people. Now, Cresley doesn't like, like uh, Darcy said, she is in the group, but she is, she does not participate, so to speak. She got really burned in social media several years ago. Like, and the only reason I know this, because Naomi mentioned it, that it yeah. was bad. And as Darcy and I are both in the social media world and a whole other side of the industry of life, um, we get it. Like it's, yeah. it's not easy to be out here all the time and people are assholes. I mean, we're just going to say it. We're reading adult yeah. books. People are assholes. Sometimes. And sometimes it yeah. should just be enough that you're like, I'm stepping away from that. I don't need that in my life. Yeah. And I respect that completely. I love the fact Absolutely. that Naomi is in there to be that, that I want to say like a hedge that, that you will not teach that you will not treat them like that. You know what I mean? Anyways, it's a great yeah. group. Um, if you want to be a part of it, I'm going to put the link in the yeah, video. Yeah, it's a very active group as well. And they've been yes. very good about spoilers. Like I, I mean, Monroe's been out almost a month. Right. I joined I the spoiler not, group. And I did not, I did not get spoiled on Monroe at all. Yeah. I joined the spoiler group so I could talk about it. Cause I was waiting for your ass to talk I about know, it I'm so sorry. long. I was like, I got to talk sorry. about this book. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but so, I mean, that's, I, I just, I'm so impressed. I'm just so impressed with Cressley's brain. I mean, genuinely, like the intelligence level is so high. Yes. And like her book, I mean, just, just the complexities of a single character, let alone like, okay, we have 19 books. That's 38 characters that she had to develop completely. Yeah. That's not to count like all the other characters that we've met. That's true. Yeah. You know, like Rook and Thad and, 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 and. Yeah. And so like, I just, people. all the other people. So next, I do not think, I do not think the next book will be Keith. I don't think so either. I don't either. I actually think it's going to be Fury. I think so. Or it's going to be Cosmina. No, 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 I don't think it's going to be Cosmina because apparently, like, I read somewhere in one of the Cressley groups that her book is written, but I oh. think the publisher, I think her publisher is not letting it go, her previous oh, publisher. Oh, okay. And it's something like Shadows, it's Shadow something, something Shadow... Um, it's on Goodreads and it says that it's not going to be released in like till, till like 2032 or something oh my like that. Gosh. Yeah. And How so I think that's because, that I think that's because that's when their rights to her intellectual mm. property run out. Wow. Now that doesn't, it could be that like they took the title and she rewrites the book completely and calls it something else. I have no idea what the terms of any of that look like. That right. is a lot yeah, of, there, legal there's argument. so much legal stuff that goes into all so that, much stuff, stuff about that stuff. So much legal. Um, so Cosmina's book, like, cause everybody was asking like where, cause someone in the group said like, I found this on Goodreads. Does anyone have a copy? I can borrow, like, I'll pay you for it and I'll yeah. send it back. 
yeah. they were like, oh, it hasn't been released. And I think Naomi said that it hadn't been released because it was written under the publisher's name. Got it. Um, I do want Cosmina's story, especially since she's missing. Yeah. Well, well let me talk her. about the cousin that hasn't shown up yet. Who's that? Yeah, the fifth cousin. We don't know. Yeah, who's that? Because, like, they talked about the banners, too. I didn't write it down. So so we have to figure out who it would be. Because yeah, Trahan's the sword. Steelian's the guard. Um, Mercio's, like, social. Mercio's the, he's the king's guard. Uh, so yeah. he was, and Lothair's the eye. So that's four. What was the fifth banner that Monroe talked about? Because that's what that fifth cousin does. I don't remember. I don't either. I have to go back and listen to it. Um, um, so we, we can leave it in the comments too. Let us know what you think. Yeah, if you guys remember. Um, because Lothair says everyone thinks he doesn't know who it is, and he does. Yeah. Because of course he does, because he's Lothair. Because he's Lothair. Um, um, can we talk about how Christoph, where Nick says Christoph is going to be as intelligent and no I was about to say the exact is, same thing. Is he going to bite Lothair? Is he going to bite Lothair? Oh. Uh, right? To find out where his mate is. Uh huh. Because he doesn't believe him. Him. A, a, a bad born vampire, vampire who can't lie. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I love it. Just, it's so funny. He's so funny. All right. Um, that is a, I love this theory. That's I, what I love this theory. I was like, it just makes sense that he's, he's going to bite Lothair. He's going to be frustrated asking Lothair where she is. And he's going to think to himself. And the I know forebear how I king out. isn't going to forbear. Uh huh. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I thought. So I don't know. I I hope that it's Kristoff and Fury. I hope that's the next one because I'm I so do too. Tired of I, I feel like it could be Kristoff and Fury because it was so nonchalantly said. Yeah. Yeah. And also, we've been talking about Fury for so long. Yeah. In don't the same way like we've been talking about Monroe. Yeah. Don't you feel like this story, it just like it surpassed over quite a bit of time. It did. I think it was like this. Okay. Let's move the story along so that we're at this point in time now so that I can have all this happen. Like for many books there, we were in the same time frame there for yeah. so long. It was like, here's going on here, but this is going on here, but this is going on here, but this is going on here. And this really advanced things along a little bit. I liked, I liked that. I was like, Oh, good. We're like, it's not, it's, I want to say we're like in a new age, but that's not the right word for it. But I was right, like, okay, but I think. I think the same thing's going to happen. So like, whereas like Conrad and Sebastian and what's his name? The cold one. I can't think of his name. I don't Trey oh, Hannah's from Oh, oh, um, the other. Gosh, Warwick. darn it. I just had it in my, my brain too. Hold on. I'll think of it. I'll, I'll get you. Give me a second. Danny and Mur Murdoch. Murdoch. Thank you. Murdoch. Thank you. Um, so like all of those were happening at the same time, Re you know, like yeah. there's a major event. So like the, uh, the high, everything happens around the high and then yeah. the, the, the order facility, everything happens around the order facility. Yeah. I think Kearney's pregnancy and birth, Kearney coming back and the death of gels, everything will start to happen around that. So there's like bubbles of time where all the stories kind of rotate. Yeah. And so like we did the high and there were a whole bunch of things happening around the high. Then there was a whole bunch of things happening around the order. And now there's gonna be a whole bunch of things happening around that same time period where like the newlings attack um, the compound and Kearney has the babies and the, you know, the. Uh, you think it's going to be in the same, same time frame? I feel like we're going to be, a, we're going to the next. I mean, well, I guess. I think I think the stories that are going to happen are going to be happening simultaneously. Like in the same okay. way that like Regan's story was happening at the same time as um, uh, Lucia. So, uh, but here's Lucia the thing. And, uh, and the witch, what's her name? And she went to hell America. and came back with her mate. Um, oh, uh, um, uh, uh, Cat. Caro. No, Caro. Carol. Carol. No, but Thank here's you. the thing. So in the in the epilogue, or uh -huh. whatever you want to call it, where Nixon and Lothair are going in the dungeon, it says sometime later. So at that point in time, Kristoff still hasn't gotten that knowledge. So if it's gonna be Kristoff, it's gotta be sometime later because he still hasn't received that. She didn't that say knowledge. that Kristoff saves her. 
No, but I'm saying if the next story is Kristoff, it's going to be sometime later. Right. But that's still happening around, like when she says sometimes later, that could have been. No, no, no. Well, the, the storyteller says like sometime later, like Nix and Lothair are in a dungeon, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. And then they're is talking that sometime about. later in Nix's mind or is that sometime later? I don't think it was Nick saying it. It wasn't Nick, it saying, was Nick it. saying it. No, it wasn't. It was like it was like the storyteller saying, you know, like you know, in three months, three months later, blah blah blah. It was like sometime later, this is hap like happening. Right, so but it's still it's it. still kind of around that like, in the same my, way that my whole point is that Kristoff and Fury can't be happening while Kearney is pregnant. Like it right. would have to be after the pregnancy. So right. I in the same like way that like, but she does that a lot though. Cause like yeah. Sebastian and Katarin get together and it's sometime later, it's, you know, months and months and months and months and months later that, um, Odin? now I can't remember any of the Roth brothers. Odin? Oh, um, oh, the Conrad? crazy one. The super Conrad strong. and Naomi. Conrad and yeah. Naomi. Yeah. Naomi, like, it's sometime later, but it's still around that same event. Does that make yeah, sense? It'll be interesting. Like, I, would, I can't wait away. to see the timeline. So like you're linked in a way though. So like yeah. the Roth brother stories all kind of happen around yeah. the high, right? Like that's all kind of around the high. Yeah. yeah. And like, then that kind of bleeds a little bit into like down to Lucia's story with Gareth. That's still kind of around the high ish. Right. Yeah. And then Regan gets captured and then everybody's story deals with the the order. Will down to down to Uliam. Like mm -hmm. that's all dealing with that. And then we have three that are just completely out of time. Um oh no wait. Dark Sky would Dark Sky still deals with the um the order. What's after Dark Sky? Sweet not Sweet Ruin. Um, no, Dark Sky and then it's Sweet Ruin and then, then Shadow Ruin. then Shadow Seduction. Wicked Abyss and then Monroe. Okay, so Sweet Ruin, that one's kind of out of time. And then Wicked Abyss is as well, although the sorcerer I dump her in hell because they know that she's his mate. Okay. Yeah. So that sort of I think it isn't it. I I didn't reread that one before Monroe got out. Before Monroe which came one? out. Um, which one? Which one? Um Wicked Abyss, where um, oh, isn't yeah. it Sabine? Isn't it Sabine who dumps her? It's Sabine and Lanthe. Because like, try, and Lanthe, because like, Lanthe tries to negotiate land for yeah. them to live in Abyssian or what that place is called. Hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell. Um, and then he sets it whirling in the in the in the yeah, atmosphere yeah. or whatever. But then he fixes it. He fixes yeah. it. He fixes it. I do yeah. love that story though, because she actually defeats him with a bag of dicks <laughs> yeah i know i i mean you, he you, thinks you, it's funny he's like it's an actual bag of dicks <laughs> i remember you cheering like yeah. i did i cheered i did i did oh gosh i did oh, i i'm sorry so like i just love her sense of humor because like even though there's a lot of serious things happening even though there's a lot of very intense battles and like internal like internal battles external battles man versus man man versus self man versus universe whatever like all of those different types of conflict that are all happening there's still that like <laughs> it's an actual bag of dicks <laughs> oh, i appreciate dope. it <laughs> all right guys if you read monroe and you've been watching this hopefully you enjoyed our conversation about it it's a lot of fun i'm gonna try and share this in the facebook group and see if people watch it and kind of see what their take is on some of our our stuff here um the next book we are reading sarah j mass the newest it's book came out house of oh my gosh my thing is all hang on like, stopped working on me is it Sky and House of I think Sky, it's Sky and, and Breath? Breath. House of yeah, Sky and Breath. House of Sky and Breath, which is book two of the Crescent City series. Um, the audiobooks, if you guys don't, we've already talked about this. We read audiobooks all the time or listen to audiobooks. They are so fantastic. Elizabeth as Evans is the narrator. She's amazing. Um, the first one, the first book in that series is like 24 hours long, 21 hours long. 27 hours and 50 minutes. I'm on Audible right now. It is amazing. It is so good. I have five hours left because uh, I was doing the reread. 
oh, which God, we decided you weren't because of Lahaba. Don't don't you're, spoil anything because we haven't even I'm talked not, about Crescent City. I'm not, but it's just, just like I can't talk I about cry. world building though. It takes a while to get into it because she has to build that world. She has to build well, that's a new world. Yeah, she has but, to build the reason, build the interaction, build all the things. But so funny story. Yeah, I'm making dinner last night. I made your your enchilada bake that yes. is always a huge hit in my house. Yeah, and I can only eat it the first day because it gets too hot after it sets for a night, like in the fridge. So like, uh -huh. I never get leftovers. Well, that's perfect so day. He likes day. that. Yeah, my husband loves hot. I can't do it. It just gives me horrible heartburn. I just can't. Yeah. I like it. I just can't do it. So <clears throat> I made that, and as I'm making it, Dave's like, "Have you finished Monroe?" And I'm like, oh, "I'm just a few minutes from the end, right?" And he's like, "Oh, okay, you'll finish it tonight." I'm like, "Yeah." And then I fell asleep on the couch, so I did not. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and he goes, well, what are you and Marley going to read next? I'm like, oh, the next book in Crescent City came out. And he goes, Crescent City? And I was like, Sarah J. Moss? Got nothing. So, like, remember when I was stringing, when I was stringing bags and I finished stringing the bags and I just sat on the couch and you came out from your office and I was just sobbing into my hands under the blanket and the dog was concerned? And he goes, oh, yeah, the second one of that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That's so that's awesome. what it was. Yeah, that's that's it. yeah. Cause like I told him and he's like, I don't I don't get why that's so but I believe oh you that gosh. it was very emotional. I'm like, it was very I'm emotional. So, I'm so excited about it. If you guys haven't read any Sarah J. Mass Moss books before, you should pick them up and read them. Any they are them. they're really good. She started writing when she was 16, Tower of Dawn uh, or not Tower of Dawn, Throne of Glass. Throne of Glass. Um, you can see the progression of her ability as an author through the book. So don't judge, like, I want to say the first three books of Throne of Glass. Don't judge them on yeah. everything else because it has gotten better. Not saying that those books are not good. They are good. No, I mean, honestly, honestly better and better and better. when she started at 16, you just think she was a new author. Yeah. Yeah. So you would it's not know that she was 16 easy. when she wrote those books. So like good. that's not she's so good. Um, she's so good. She's very, so talented. very, very, very excited. So that's going to be the next book. Hopefully. Hopefully Darcy will read it faster. Um, we're gonna read it together. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish mine tonight, and then then we'll start. We'll go. I have a, I have a lot of things to do today that will not allow me to read. But hopefully, okay. hopefully tomorrow I can do all the reading if all right. they bring my other freaking yeah. sewing machine back. All right. Okay. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you later.